All right, so welcome back to the show. You're here with Terry Lynn and my co-host Travis Marziani. We're going to talk about finding your 1,000 true fans today. But before we start, uh, what's going on, Travis? So Tuesday, I decided, based on some advice that I got, to raise my prices like more or less across the board by 10%. Some things I raised a little bit higher and some things I more or less left the same. So I was really nervous about this because uh, you know I've had my prices the same for a while and we recently just started adding a shipping charge. So I was scared I'm gonna wake up and not have any sales. So how much did you raise them by before we get into it? About 10%. So if you know it was a $20 item, I'd raise them by like, it was $22 afterwards, more or less. And who gave you this advice to do it? It's Antonio from Real Men, Real Style. I actually, I had him on my podcast and then afterwards we were talking about some just general like marketing advice and it was really cool. Like everybody I talked to, like everybody I've had on the show so far at the end, they just sit down and talk with me for 30 minutes. I'm like, you couldn't pay these guys to do a one-on-one -on -one for 30 minutes. They'd probably, or you'd probably charge like a thousand dollars. But for me, they're just like, yeah, let's just talk, shoot the shit. So nice. And so what happened? So I woke up the next day, Wednesday morning, I was really nervous. And I figured, you know, if I had one or two sales, I'd be happy. And I'd say, okay, it was a success. Like people didn't stop buying for me. I woke up to $1,000 in sales, and that day we had a record day of over $3,000 in sales. So I, I raised the price 10% and we had a record day the next day. So there was a guy, my friend in the consulting space, uh, he was saying, say you charge $1,000 an hour and you have 10 clients, you should double that and as long as you, your client base doesn't drop by 50%, you're making more money. Yeah, exactly, and that's how I figured it, especially because we have to produce this. So. It doesn't, it costs us the same amount whether we sell one item for $100 or one item for $10. So there's, I'd rather sell, sell a little bit less and have a higher margin, but it looks like the mar that we're going to sell just as many and just have a better margin, which is fine by me. Yeah, well, and the materials and the labor, all the logistics that go into making less stuff, there's some cost there, right? Yeah, and I kind of don't want a lot of individual sales. So I'm trying to make it a little bit harder. If someone's going to buy like one pair of dance shorts, I don't want to make it too cheap for them. That's why we have the shipping charge. And that's why I wanted to raise the prices too. We're also now a little bit more flexible. If a dance studio calls us and says, hey, you know, do you give a, give a discount? We can say, yeah, we give 10% discount. So we're basically just giving them the old prices. But they feel good. We feel good. And it works out. Yeah. And you don't get individual orders with all these headaches that come with that too. And if, they, if we do get those individual orders, they're paying a premium. So it's fine by me yeah exactly yeah and i think there should be some premium on like made to order too right rather than a mass produced thing absolutely my big thing is when we started off the business i don't want to scare anyone away because it was so much more expensive and it's not that much more expensive but now that we've built up a little bit of a clientele they know that we have good quality stuff it's okay to raise our prices because they're going to keep coming back to us you know imagine if you're buying something and you really like it and it's raised by a dollar or two you're not going to just be like, oh, well, this is way too much. You're going to probably buy it again. Yeah. And a dollar, two dollars is not that much really in the grand scheme of things too. Right? Exactly. And I, I, I chalk it up to two different types of people. There's the people that are buying individual stuff and to them, it's just a dollar or two. That's not going to stop them from buying. And then you have the big like dance studios or whatever that are going to buy, you know, 40 things. But to them, they want what they want. And they're not really, they're not as price sensitive as you might think because they know exactly what they want and it's just like, okay, they're not, I don't think they're really looking. I think they're just going to get exactly what they came for. If that makes sense. Gotcha. All right, cool. And so for me, uh, I saw this new thing on my site called Just Uno. I forgot where I read this, but basically it's a social incentive for, it's like a social incentive pop-up where you can choose either Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, email, Google Plus, or Pinterest and then they'll give you a code. But the code doesn't have to be confirmed in their inbox they give it to you right away or you can do it like the confirmation way too so it's kind of interesting how you can have different social channels so what i did was uh for mobile i put like an instagram pop-up where like if you follow us you'll get uh 15 off plus free shipping and then i just jacked the prices up a little bit by 15 percent just to see uh, how this works and then for the desktop you can do facebook email uh pinterest whatever channel is already working for you instead of a blanket uh email and the cool thing is you can also set an expiration date and time uh, for different campaigns. So you can say, hey, this code only works until the end of January or something like that. So I could have this on my site and say, for instance, uh, if you share our website on Facebook, then I'll give you a code for 10% off. And it and it's like a pop-up. And you can say, you could do Facebook uh, or Instagram, or if you want to try Pinterest, you could, hey, if you follow us on Pinterest, 
Uh, and it says like after you follow us, the code will show up in this window right under it too. That's really cool. I'm gonna have to look into that. You, you can set expiration codes too by either like two days, a week or something like that. So I know Anton from Dropship Lifestyle told me it's worked well for him too on some of his sites. So what if somebody comes on a site and they, they see the pop-up and I instinctually do this, I just like close the X and then later they realize, oh crap, I do want to sign up for that and get the 10% off or whatever it is. Yeah, they can come back and get it, get it again or you can set a trigger where it only shows up after you've seen like three page views. I love that. Or after if you've actually clicked it, it doesn't show up again. You can just say, hey, this is the one time thing or something like that. You can, there's some certain triggers you can do based off interactions with the JavaScript. So That is so cool. Yeah, so the, so the page view thing makes sense because your average page view was what? Sometimes up to like six or seven? Uh, I think the a- average is like four probably. Yeah, so by the third one, it'll say, hey, do you, if you want 15% off, like us on Facebook and then I'll give you a code. Yeah, Because I think they charge you by the amount of shares or likes or follows. So I think the free trial, you get 30. And once you hit up to 30 likes or 30 follows, like you have to start paying for X amount. It's like eight, eight bucks for like 100 or like 200 or something. It's, it's pretty cheap. Yeah, so Kevin Kelly wrote this article uh, called 1000 True Fans. And the concept was basically saying, um, as a musician, artist, uh, whatever, blog writer, if you can find a thousand people to give you a hundred dollars every year, you can make a hundred K a year and have a decent living. But how do you find those 1000 true customers or people that have access to uh, your 1000 true customers is what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. So the first thing is when I knew the concept of thousand true fans, I initially did not realize that it was, Oh, a thousand true fans paying you 50 or a hundred dollars and you'll be able to, you know, sustain a living. I just thought it was a general idea of you need to find the thousand people that are your true target market. So it was kind of funny because it was a little bit of a misconception by me. So I thought, okay, I need to find the thousand people that are the most important to me. Like those thousand people, if I could sell to them, my business would succeed. Who are those? And something that was interesting, and I'll just add this in right now, around the same time I was reading the book, The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell, and he talks a lot about connectors, mavens, and all this kind of different stuff. And I realized that, well, who are those? How do those two interlink? So the connectors are the people in the community who know a large number of people and are who are in a habit of making introductions. So for me, that was the dance studio owners because those people know everybody. Like they they don't just know you know one person. Like like a dance mom, for instance, might just know one person. The connectors are the people. Like you have a, everybody has a friend like that where you're always meeting new people through him. Those are the connectors. Those are the people. And if you can get those people to believe in whatever your product is, then they'll tell everybody because they know everybody and they're very friendly people. Yeah. And I think one thing before we get deeper is that if we look at 1,000 true fans, well, you can narrow it down to like the 10 true fans. Where do you find your first 10, right? And you can start with either three connectors, three mavens, and three salespeople on a smaller scale instead of having, because 1,000 starting out, the number seems kind of scary. But I think when you understand the three different types of people, it's actually much more manageable. And I think connectors could just be like, say, like internet marketing or kind of e-commerce. Like I guess we're connectors for e-commerce. Um, you have a friend that's maybe, you know, goes to nightclubs a lot. They know the owner. Uh, they know like this guy at this bar. They know the bartender. They're like a good connector in that environment, right? Or you go volunteer work. Usually the head organizer knows a lot of people, a lot of donors, uh, things like that. A lot of hookups they have from like getting deals. And I think connectors... You know who they are instinctually, but I think when you write them down on a piece of paper or when you're breaking this down into a framework and you think about it that way, it's a lot more applicable to anything you do. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd, I'd even say, if you're not really sure who your thousand true fans are, think who's the one person you could sell a product to and make them a happy customer. And that would really change your business. I mean, would it be a, a blog writer? Maybe it's a really big blog writer. And then once you realize, oh, if I was only able to convince this fashion blogger that my wallets are the best in the business, then I'd have a successful business. Then you realize, okay, so your real people that you're trying to target for those thousand true fans are blog writers is one example. And you can even do that again with uh, what types of mavens, what's one type of maven that or one person that is a maven that I could target and sell to. Yeah, exactly. And I think there's a couple of ways to look for connectors. You could do like social connectors, uh, cultural connectors, uh, professional connectors or economic connectors, right? So for you, dance studios is kind of a mix of professional slash economic, I guess, maybe cultural, but a little bit of cultural, yeah. And But then like a happy customer or a, or a soccer mom that runs the PTA is kind of like a social thing too, 
right? Or like a dance mom. I mean, dance mom that runs a PTA is like the social circle. So there's different ways to look at connectors. Uh, next one is mavens. So mavens are information specialists that kind of uh, rely on information. So I guess these, I guess you could say bloggers are mavens too, but they're also connectors. But I feel like mavens are like industry experts, kind of they have the knowledge for something. Um, specifically more like a trainer, right? I'd say bloggers are definitely mavens where when I think of con connectors, I mean, some of them, you know, people obviously span more than one of these categories, but a maven to me is someone that's just like, you say, hey, what do you think about the new iPhone? And they know all the, the details and you could say, well, what do you think about the Android phone or whatever type? And they know it. And that's bloggers to me. And some bloggers are very social, but I'm sure that there's a lot of bloggers out there that they don't have a big network of people. So my first thought, Mavens, is bloggers. I, I think it's like the hardcore baseball guy who knows the batting average of like 100 people off the top of his head, kind of like that. Exactly. Yeah, that guy might not be the most social guy in the world, but he's definitely a Maven. What it really is, I think, is the person that people look to when they want to know. So yeah, a mechanic's a good example. Or who do you look to when you're going to buy a new product? Is it, uh, it could be a blogger. It could be, you know, your friend Ted, who's just like, he knows everything there is to know about wallets. And that's the guy that is like, hey, Ted, what do you think about this wallet? Or this type of watch is a good example. I have a friend that like, before I buy a watch, I would 100% ask him, hey, what do you think about this brand versus this brand? So let's move on to the third one, uh, salesmen. So salesmen are persuaders, uh, people that negotiate really well. And they tend to have kind of like a very passionate kind of spirit to them when they talk about what they like. So I guess this for you could be kind of like dance moms, right? Dance moms for sure. Because... They'll go in and they'll be like, oh my God, I just bought the cutest thing. You have to check this out. And they might not necessarily be, you know, really involved in the information. They're more the emotional side of things, actually. I, from my opinion, salesmen are very much like Mavens, except salesmen kind of go more on the emotion. And they also have better social skills. When I think of a Maven, I think of someone that doesn't necessarily have great social skills, but the salesman they're, they go in there and they can sell someone on something. Yeah, well, I think the maven is driven by knowing the information, not necessarily by sh sharing it with people or getting that validation in the social setting too, whereas like a connector or salesman kind of lean towards that angle. Salesman is the person that has an iPhone and it's like, oh my God, you don't have an iPhone? What's wrong with you? Where mavens are like, iPhones are good because of this, this, and this, but the you know HTC phone's good because this, this, and this. So it depends on, like, I think they're, when I think of a maven, I think of someone a little bit more level-headed where the salesman's like, oh my God, you're not wearing Lululemon. What is wrong with you? Yeah, and I think the best salesman that we talked about earlier is that it's actually not you. It's a happy customer because it's like going to what we said earlier. It's like, you're not cool. If you say you're cool, you're only cool if someone else says you're cool. For me specifically, I tend to find that by talking in our blog about connectors, that's you know featuring the dance studios on our blog, that has a really big impact. But for the salesmen, the dance moms, I find featuring their daughter as our dancer of the month tends to do really well. Because they're like, oh my God, I love this company. They, you know, they made Sally dancer of the month and they go tell all their friends about it. And connectors will do that too to some degree, but salesmen you can win over and they're, you'll, they'll be their, your fan for life. So one thing is interesting that I bring this up is that I was uh, at some drinks with friends the other day and one of them bought my wallet. So I was like, oh, how's it working out? And he said, oh, it's the best purchase I made all year. And then you, I thought about it too. I was like, what if I said this would be the best purchase you buy all year? It's kind of hard to believe, right? But when someone else says it for you, like, oh, hey, that's kind of cool. And everyone heard it and I didn't have to say it myself. So it kind of goes back to the salesman thing where, hey, you know, you, you can be a good salesman, but the best one is someone that's happy that can say it for you too. And it's just more scalable too. You know, and I think bloggers actually could be salesmen too, because I look at, and you know, I'm a fan, fan of Tim Ferriss. If he says like, hey, this is a really great product, I believe him because I don't think he's willing to risk like his entire fan base just to make a couple bucks. I think he's only going to promote things that he actually has bought himself and is happy with. Yeah, well, if you look at him, he's kind of all three, right? He has the connectors. He's been like the VC space. He's in like the corporate space, Shopify. He's doing all this stuff, Uber, Airbnb, and SF. And, but he's also a maven dude because he's into all this data stuff, right? Like the body hacking and measuring all these metrics about himself, four-hour body stuff. And he's also a good salesman because then when he says, buy this, like a bunch of people buy it. So you agree he's amazing then? Yeah, yeah, We're yeah, in agreement yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, he's all three, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you can, de <laughs> I think you can definitely find people that span it, but I just wanted to add that in. That's, you know, salesmen don't have to necessarily be these individual small fish. You can get a salesman, and there's a lot of bloggers out there that say you need to buy the new iPhone, otherwise you're just not a worthy human being. 
All right, so wrapping up, um, kind of a short episode. So I guess when you look at your business, like when you talk about featuring your customers, like in terms of like the 80, 20 out of like connectors, mavens and salesmen, which one would you say was the biggest impact for you? Connectors, for sure. Because connectors, for me, the, the, you know, the dance, do, dance studio owners, they just have access to so many people. And there's also a repeat purchase nature with them. But more importantly, it's just if you can get them, they also have the ability, if you feature them on the website, for instance, they'll put a link from their site to your site. And more people trust them, I think. You know, you get like the salesman, which in my case is the dance moms. You, It's great. And that could work really well. I mean, I did have one dance mom that basically went into her dance studio and said, hey, this company is really great. Two weeks later, we had $4,000 in sales because that dance studio owner believed so much what she had to say. So it could be. But my first thought is the connectors are really important, especially in the dance world. People that are very social tend to have a lot of persuasion. Yeah. All right. So I guess that's it for this episode. Uh, check out The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, we'll link to it in the show notes. Also, 1000 True Fans by Kevin Kelly. And something that's a little sneak peek here, we're actually going to release a course on how Travis uh, kind of in these concepts tied together. So we'll have a guide on A, how to find your customers, uh, what do you email them, uh, SOPs, you can have your VA send to it because uh, right now, a lot of people do email outreach by themselves. There's actually ways to automate this through Thunderbird, uh, Gmail, that you can actually send personalized emails one by one. You know, at first when we were talking about doing the info product, and I had a, a number of different people tell me it'd be a good idea specifically to feature this, I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, I don't know, would I, would I pay you know, money to learn this stuff? And then I started thinking about how long it t- took me to figure out that, oh, I can send out automated emails. I can do all this really cool stuff. Oh, you know, here's my tips for finding how to find emails for companies or that you can feature on your website. I'm like, man, if I could have told myself that at the beginning, hell yeah, I would have paid for that. And I think the trifecta is not the pentafecta is that A, you don't have to write like a 2000 word blog article every week, which is where I think a lot of people struggle with because it killed me. It killed me writing about dance clothing, you know, a thousand words about dance or dance related stuff. That was a big motivator to start doing this because I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to write 10 tips to buy a wallet forever. Or like things like, like no, like just thinking about that makes me want to puke. And, and I think two, like going back to the connector, Maven salesman, it's really, really targeted traffic and it builds your relationship with dance studios, instructors, or whatever industry you're in, coffee shop owners, uh, you know, fashion blogs, things like that. And three, uh, there's also SEO juice, right? Because when you get links from them, uh, it's there forever on their site. They share it on their social media. They're, you're building in content distribution traffic in a sense conversion too, because A, you're also targeting the right customers that they have access to. So I think Everything here that we've kind of talked about here, it's almost like a holy grail of content slash traffic slash sales in some way. So uh, we're gonna repackage this up a little bit, um, kind of make it more digestible and a step-to-step guide on how you can do this too uh, sometime in the next month or two. Thanks for joining us, Travis, and we'll catch you next week. Good. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Build My Online Store podcast. If you want the show notes, make sure to check out the website at buildmyonlinestore.com. If you got an e-commerce store, every two weeks I lead a live mastermind call with about five or six of the listeners in two separate groups where we work openly together and solve a business problem that you have. And we're all there to support each other. So if this sounds like a cup of tea, make sure to check us out at buildmyonlinestore.com slash mastermind. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch up with you guys next week.